Hey what's up guys, it's Deathstalker Seeker here with the first ever Helldivers loadout video. As promised, this video is going to be all about the cyborgs and teach you how to build the most effective cyborg loadouts. Also keep in mind that this video is geared for high level cyborg missions, meaning planets with high difficulties around 8 to 12. Though, don't worry, that doesn't mean you won't be able to play a planet with lower difficulty, it just means that it may be a little bit of an overkill. Now the first thing you need to do is understand why fighting the cyborgs is so tricky. Most struggle with the cyborgs because of their difference in units and wide range of both attacks and defenses. The cyborgs both have light armor as well as heavily armored units, as well as some serious bullet sponges like the Grotesque and the Butcherers. Then there's the infamous IFV which takes some of the best anti-tank weapons in the game to destroy. There's also the fact that cyber planets can also spawn on, and most likely will spawn on, snow planets giving it an extra challenge. Now first up is your primary weapon. Your primary weapon is everything, it's the tool that will spread the most democracy, therefore you must choose it right. While Helldivers has a large arsenal, you want to use the most efficient means to accomplish your mission against whichever alien race you're opposing. When choosing the weapons for a cyborg mission, keep in mind that you want something that can make quick work of the squishy cyborgs while also minimizing the risk to you and your fellow Helldivers. I have narrowed this down to 6 weapons with superb performance. First is the Justice, an assault rifle or AR for short with high damage and armor piercing unstoppable rounds. The Justice made the list simply because it's one of the best all around assault rifles versus armor. The addition of a rounds being unstoppable is practically overkill. In case you're unfamiliar with it, unstoppable rounds will rip through multiple enemies and continue down their path. This allows you to damage multiple enemies with each shot, but keep in mind that they will not go through heavy armor. When using the Justice, remember to bring resupply stratagems as the clips are smaller than other ARs and you'll likely run out of ammo moderately fast. Also, I don't recommend upgrading to the improved melee for this specific rifle. While it does deal higher damage thanks to the bayonet, it also slows down the speed of repeated melees. This is not something you want when fighting the bugs with the Justice, which is also a race that this gun performs superbly. Rival the Justice for the slot for the best AR is the Patriot. The Patriot shows high rate of fire over damage and thus shreds through the softer cyborgs like butter. I even found it to be quite capable weapon versus the Butcherers. So when using the Patriot, be sure to bring the resupply stratagem as ammo will easily be depleted. For the Patriot, I do recommend improved melee upgrade because this weapon is best used against the cyborgs and the addition of the bayonet is a nice last resort versus a lone grotesque or hound. Speaking of hounds and grotesques, you may want a weapon that will clear these annoying rushes quickly. What better than the community favorite shotgun, the Breaker. Other than high damage and a wide spread, the Breaker also comes with unstoppable rounds, allowing it to clear entire squads and rip through bridges as well. Though due to its high rate of fire, you'll also want to bring in the resupply stratagem as this gun is hungry for ammo. Now if you aren't too fond of shotguns and favor precision more, then the Paragon is a weapon you'll appreciate. The Paragon's greatest strength is its high damage, armor piercing, poison rounds, making it both an aggressive offense and a support weapon at the same time. With each round that hits its target, poison is applied to them, dealing additional damage over time as well as slowing them and causing them to randomly flinch. This is great for slowing down grotesque and butcherers and buying your squad time to safely put them down. Precision is required with the Paragon because it's a semi-automatic weapon, meaning it fires in a 3 round burst or with a skilled trigger finger, single fire. With the aim you can quickly halt hounds in their charge and even clear out full groups of grotesque. While I usually say that using the laser sight is a good idea, I won't in this case. That's because you'll need that perk slot, so it'd be more beneficial for you to just take your time and place your shots. If not, pick up a different weapon on the list, like maybe the Scorcher. The Scorcher is a new one of Helldivers and has earned a special place in my heart. Rather than firing bullets, the Scorcher actually fires plasma that will detonate on impact, dealing the damage to those in the close vicinity as well as light anyone and caught in the blast on fire. This is great for both clearing out patrols and quickly dispatching small groups of enemies. Though what really blew me away was the fact that it's also capable of taking out Cyborg Hawks and Warlords. Add to that the way it excels at willing down grotesque and you've got a pretty impressive anti-cyber weapon. And last but not least we have the Sickler. The Sickler is a laser weapon so it fires a different ammunition system than all other weapons and actually has infinite range. When firing, laser weapons expel heat which is then absorbed by a thermal clip. When the thermal clip is acquired the maximum amount of heat it can hold the weapon over heats and must be reloaded. This places another thermal clip into the weapon and then you can resume firing before repeating the cycle. But here's a twist, when you stop firing, the thermal clip starts to cool off on its own. So with the right firing pattern and small breaks between your shots, you can go an entire mission without ever needing to reload. On top of the lack of the need to reload, the Sickler also sports some high damage, especially when hitting the center of enemies. Now in case you haven't thought of it yet, if you don't need to reload, then there's no need to bring in the resupply stratagem. 
That means if you use a Sickler, you'll also be granting yourself the ability to bring in an additional stratagem that normally you wouldn't have the available slot for. Perk selection can be very easy when playing against an enemy, after all, they're just passive abilities. That doesn't mean that they don't make a difference. When you're tackling a hell dive or any high level mission, you want the best loadout for the job and your perk is still part of that loadout. Amongst the small list of perks, I found that the best ones for the cyborgs are actually four perks that would be the only ones worth considering. First on that list is the displacement field. Now though the displacement field is first on the list, it doesn't mean it's the best. Though there's no better contingency than the displacement field. For those unfamiliar with the perk, it allows the user when active to teleport a short distance instead of dying. For example, if you decide to take a rocket to the face, instead of dying, your held up would teleport a couple paces away in a somewhat random direction. As this occurs, the displacement field goes into cooldown and the effect won't reapply for another 30 or so seconds. You can tell it's active by this glowing semicircle around the Helldiver's head. Now the reason why that displacement field made the list is pretty clear and straightforward. Other than escaping certain death, this can also cut down the possible team kills. So it's a very good counter for the hounds and the grotesques, and you'll be able to escape them at least once. After which you should probably be much more wary of the distance between you and them. One to add a tip though, is to keep in mind that the location and direction of teleportation is random, and if you're not fast enough or just unlucky enough, death can still be right around the corner. If you find yourself still on the ground bleeding out, then the auto ejector perk is probably a better bet. With the auto ejector perk assigned in your loadout, you'll be able to get up much faster on your own. This not only gets you back on your feet and, and the fight a lot faster, it also keeps your squad mates doing more productive things like roads and hounds. And as a commentary and fellow Helldiver named Maya Yoki said, this is a great backup for the Cyborg Hounds because it allows you to jump back on your feet and enforce some democracy. Next up is my personal favorite, Stratagem Priority. Stratagem Priority decreases the overall cooldown time for all stratagems by 40%. This makes the list for that very fact. With the Stratagem Priority, new possibilities for stratagems uses are now available, as well as new tactics could be applied. For example, with a Stinger Stratagem Missile Stratagem and the Stratagem Priority, you can easily clear out multiple bugginess, allowing the squad to freeze through these objectives with ease. And last and definitely not least, or maybe not least, is the Cardio Accelerator. This perk will enable your Helldiver to move much faster and enable for faster travel between objectives and rapid tactical withdrawals. Though I still don't suggest trying to outrun hounds. This perk seems very simple and it very much is, which is why I can't give 10,000 reasons why you should choose it over another perk, but I will say that it is well worth it. The Cardio Accelerator is one of the most underrated perks because it simply increases movement speed but this makes a huge difference once deployed. Even I still use it on high level missions, but it's worth saying that it is best used for solo missions, that way you won't pull a camera from your teammates or have to wait for them to catch up to you. Now that brings this Helldivers loadout video to a conclusion. If you have any favorite weapons or perks, drop it down in the comment section below, where you can also drop any questions, tips, or suggestions. And don't worry, more videos will follow, but if you want to be the first one to know when they go up, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Also remember you can find me on Facebook and Twitter to keep up to date with the channel and find out some new things before anywhere else such as live streams or times that I'll be online and available to play with you guys even. Remember, as always, all links are in the description below.